Good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship this morning. Uh, we apologize this morning. We're having a little bit of technical difficulties with our sound, uh, but we tested it. We know it's not as good as normal, but we hope that you can um, hear me throughout worship today. So one thing I wanted to make sure that you knew about is immediately following worship at 1030 here in the parking lot at Gloria Day, we are going to have drive-in communion. We are going to do this every third Sunday of the month. And this is where you come, find a parking spot. Um, you're welcome to stay in your car or you're welcome to get out and stand by your car. And we will pray together, we will take communion together, and we will be blessed on our way. So I hope that I'll see you this morning at 1030 in the morning. And so now let's take a moment to pause, to take a deep breath and center our hearts and minds for worship this morning by listening to the prayer.
be the Holy Trinity, one God whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. How vast is God's grace. Through the power and promise of Christ Jesus, our sins are washed away, and we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community, living out Christ's justice and the Spirit's reconciling peace. Amen. Let us pray. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ most merciful Redeemer, for the countless blessings and benefits you give. May we know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day praising you, with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of John, the first chapter. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said to him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see the heavens opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. My sister-in-law got Thomas this poop game, a rainbow poop emoji, for Christmas this past year. You hit the button once, and then you go and hide it, and it kind of jeers at you to come and find it. And once you find it, you hit the button again, and you hear this really catchy song. It's an earworm. I feel like I'm always singing this song, so I'm going to play it for you. Okay, that's all I'm going to play for you. It keeps going. And I hear this song multiple times a day. Because not only is Thomas loving to play this game, but Jane loves the song. So we just leave it around for her, and she goes, and she just hits it until she gets to the song. And then she sits there, and she rocks, and she dances to it. This has become my life with a rainbow poop emoji game. And so this morning and this week when I read this gospel text, I heard that song playing in my head as I was reading it. Because there's a lot of finding in our gospel text this morning. 
This is John's account of Jesus' calling of the disciples. Jesus finds Philip. Philip finds Nathanael. Philip then tells Nathanael that they have found Jesus, the Messiah. And then Nathanael finds that Jesus knows a whole lot more about him than he'd imagined. I don't know if there was a song that turns into an earworm the moment that they found each other um, that started to play. Actually, I can say with pretty much certainty there probably wasn't a song like that one that played at that moment. But what is clear is that moment when they encountered each other and when they encountered Jesus, their lives were different from that point on. They were now disciples of Jesus. Everything for them would be different from this point on. It is clear throughout the Gospels that it is not easy to be a disciple. You didn't get to pick and choose which teachings of Jesus you decided to follow. Many of the things that created stability to your faith and your life previously, Jesus turned upside down. He ate with the wrong people. Jesus healed the wrong people on the wrong days. He challenged the powerful religious and political leaders of the time. He told them to love one another and be servant leaders to all people. He called them to let go of their own power and self-serving interests in order to serve others, especially the vulnerable. Let's not forget the person that we have the longest recorded conversation between Jesus and another person is the Samaritan woman. A woman who he shouldn't have been talking to in the first place because of her gender, and then on top of it, she was a Samaritan, someone he never should have been talking to. And yet, that is the longest conversation that we are able to witness that we see recorded in the Gospels. Jesus challenged much of society, and it was not easy to be a disciple of Jesus. And it isn't easy for us today either. We've been fooled if we think that it is. In the Gospel of Luke, we hear Jesus tell us that in order to be his disciple, you need to give up all your possessions, your family, and to be willing to carry your own cross. Did Philip and Nathaniel really understand all that it means to be a disciple in our Gospel reading today? Do we always fully understand what it means to be a disciple of Jesus. Somewhere along the way, especially in Christianity in America, I think we have forgotten this type of discipleship. The one that calls you to shift your priority of your time and your money, to speak for justice, to articulate what the kingdom of God looks like in the way we have been taught by the words of Jesus. The type of discipleship we hear about in the liturgy of our baptism. This is taken from the affirmation of baptism liturgy. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism? To live among God's faithful people? To hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper? To proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed? To serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. I fear that all too often, our identity is no longer rooted in being a disciple of Jesus, but is rather rooted in what church we belong to, like Gloria Day, Lutheran Church. We can tell you what great book study our church has, or the type of organ that is in our sanctuary. Or sometimes, better yet, we sometimes can tell you the things that we wish were part of our church community. Some of those things that we used to have and no longer have. How big the Sunday school used to be. And how long the, large the Christmas Eve service was 20 years ago. Don't get me wrong. Those things aren't bad things. Being in an being an active part of a faith 
community is a very important part of discipleship. But make no mistake, there is much more to being a disciple than the fa what faith community you belong to and what programs that community may or may not have. Often we have an easy time telling someone about our faith community, but have a hard time telling someone about how the teachings of Jesus changed us and the ways we view one another and the world around us. Discipleship is about becoming a whole new person with a whole new identity, much like Nathaniel and Philip in our gospel reading. Sometimes we, especially as Lutherans, we can think that faith is a way of thinking. Do we understand Luther's theology and his small catechism really well? Do we believe the right things intellectually? Do things look the right way in the sanctuary when we worship? Can we articulate the faith that faith is a gift that is given to us, not something that is earned? But discipleship isn't a way of thinking. Discipleship is a way of being. It's a way of living. It's a way of moving through the world differently because of Jesus. It means that we see all through things through the lens of being a disciple of Jesus first and foremost. Discipleship demands sacrifice. It demands our attention, our money, and our time. All of our other identities, our gender, our race, our career, our family, our political affiliation, and the country that we happen to live in, all of those identities do make us who we are but they are shaped by our faith in Jesus, not the other way around. If you ever find yourself supporting and sympathizing with someone committing violence in the name of Jesus, you've forgotten what it means to be a disciple. If you ever find yourself prioritizing accumulating your own wealth rather than sharing it with those in need, you've forgotten what it means to be a disciple. If you ever find yourself name-calling, even swearing at, someone on social media because they don't support the political candidate that you do, you've forgotten what it means to be a disciple of Jesus. If you ever find yourself deciding who's worthy to he of help, and who's in, and who's out, you've forgotten what it means to be a disciple of Jesus. The climate that we find ourselves in right now especially as we lead into a week with a presidential inauguration where some people are thrilled and other people are absolutely outraged by it. It is so easy to forget who we are and to forget whose we are. It's so easy to focus on our differences rather than what unifies us. It is so easy to forget the teachings of Jesus. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, the German pastor and theologian who spoke out against the atrocities in Nazi Germany, once wrote, If my sinfulness appears to me to be in any way smaller or less detestable in comparison with the sins of others, I am still not recognizing my sin at all. Thank God it isn't up to us being good disciples in order for us to save ourselves, or for us to earn our way into heaven. If you don't feel conflicted today, give me a call and let's talk. Because here's the good news. Jesus saves us, and thank goodness he doesn't ever stop saving us. Jesus greets us with forgiveness and grace over and over again as we continue to get this whole discipleship thing often wrong. That doesn't mean that we just throw up our hands and don't try to be better disciples. In fact, it's because of Jesus' grace and the promises we have from God that we have the freedom to keep trying to be better. 
even as we know how hard it is to be a disciple of Jesus in our world today, we can be assured that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has walked before us and will be with us, always leading us, guiding us, and yes, even challenging us to a life of greater discipleship. We know that in the struggle to be a disciple, we are called to serve one another. We are called to love one another. And we are called to carry one another's burdens. Amen. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. For the body of Christ gathered throughout the world, and for all servants of the gospel that following Jesus, the church lives out its calling every day, let us pray, have mercy, O God. For the well-being of creation, for plants and animals, and for all that God has marvelously made that we serve as wise stewards of the earth, our home. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For police officers and firefighters, for attorneys and paralegals, for peacekeepers and military personnel, and for the leaders of government, that they provide protection to all people, especially the most vulnerable. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. For those lacking food or shelter, for those who are sick or grieving, and for those who are imprisoned or homebound, that God console all who suffer, let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. And thanksgiving for the saints who have gone before us, especially for the life, ministry, and vision of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., May we continue to work towards a beloved community where all are valued. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God, the creator, strengthen you. Jesus, the beloved, fill you. And the Holy Spirit, the comforter, keep you in peace. Amen. Go in peace. Be the light of Christ. Thanks be to God. Thank you.